Hello and welcome to Train Signal. I'm Veronica Henry and you're watching an overview of network monitoring tools. In this lesson, we'll talk a little bit about the concept of network monitoring and then move right into a discussion and demonstration of some of the most popular network monitoring tools. Network administrators will be most familiar with the concept of network monitoring. But for those of you who are newbies, network monitoring is simply a subset of the network management tasks that administrators perform on a daily basis. It basically tracks your network activity for anything that might indicate you have a problem, whether it be immediate or an indicator of a potential future problem. Monitoring is often performed on a dedicated machine attached to your network, usually using a GUI application of some sort or another. But network monitoring can also be performed from the command line with simple tools that reveal a plethora of information. So now we'll dive into examples of the most commonly used network monitoring tools. Packet Internet Groper, or PING for short, is probably the most recognized network troubleshooting tool, though probably not by its longer name. When you have a problem with network connectivity issues, PING is usually the first tool that's pulled out of the arsenal. It tests connectivity by sending and monitoring ICMP echo requests that are used to determine if another computer is available for communications on a TCP IP network. In order to use PING, you only need to know either the NetBIOS name, the DNS name, or the IP address of the other computer. And the syntax is very simple. It's just PING followed by the name of the computer. So for example, if you wanted to test connectivity to Google, you would type in PING space www.google.com. Let's go to a Windows command prompt and try this out, though you could technically do it from a Linux terminal window as well. The result will be the same. OK, again from the command prompt, and this is just the Windows command prompt that you access by typing in CMD. Let's try typing in ping. We'll type in www.google.com and hit enter. Now what you should get back is what you see here on the screen. You have a reply with some bytes, with some time, and some other statistics. That means that the connection between your computer over to Google is functioning properly. Okay, now let's go back to the presentation and talk about what to do if ping doesn't work. If you don't get a reply from the ping command, and after you've checked things like the client software configuration, then you can use the tracer T or tracer route commands. These commands allow you to check the network path between two computers. All you need is the name or IP address of the destination computer. And the syntax is simple like ping and simply tracer T or tracer route followed by that name of the computer. So let's go back to our terminal and give it a try. OK, back at our Windows command prompt, let's try typing in tracert space www.google.com and hit enter. And what we should see is the route in terms of hops between your computer and the destination computer. And as you can see here, it tells you that it's going to do a maximum of 30 hops. And so what you'll see is some times and actual path, again, that your data is taking. Okay, now that that's complete, let's head back to the presentation. Our next tool is called ipconfig. It's used to display and modify current TCP IP configuration information, like the IP address, your subnet mask, the default gateway, and the DNS server address, and there are several switches that can be used to tailor its functionality. Let's go back to our command prompt and try this one out. OK, back at our command prompt, let's try out our next command. Just type in IPCONFIG and hit Enter. I'm going to scroll up so you can see all of the content. And from the top, you can see that we have the Ethernet adapter information here. 
including your IP address and default gateway. Then we have some information for VMware since we do have that installed on this system. And other information, though generally you'll spend all of your time concentrated in this space. Okay, let's go back to the presentation and take a look at the Linux version of this tool next. ifconfig is the Linux equivalent of ipconfig, and again, it's used to view or change your network interface card configuration information. The syntax is either typing in ifconfig by itself, or ifconfig followed by the interface, or ifconfig followed by the interface and the new setting if you want to make a change. But there's one difference between ipconfig and ifconfig. The Linux version will not display your default gateway address. So in that case, you can use the route command with no options to display this information. Let's go over to a Fedora Linux virtual machine and in a terminal window, give this command a try. Okay, from Fedora Linux, in order to open up a terminal window, click on Applications, System Tools, and terminal. And from this point, let's try our command. Just type in ifconfig and hit enter. And as you can see, we have hardware address information, we have IP address, broadcast address, and even subnet mask. And we have the same information for the loopback address. Now let's try typing in the route command. Simply type in R-O-U-T-E and hit enter. And again, this information displays our default gateway address. Okay, let's head back to our presentation and take a look at our next tool. Our next tool is called NSLOOKUP, and it's used to verify your computer can communicate with its DNS server. When you use this command at the command prompt, it should respond with the IP address of one or more computers. If you see multiple IP addresses, this means that that site is configured to host content across multiple web servers. The syntax is nslookup followed by host or the fully qualified domain name. Okay, back at our command prompt, let's type in nslookup followed by www.google.com and hit enter. And again, as you see, we have a response with IP addresses. And if you recall from the slide, if we have multiple IP addresses, that just means that the site is configured to host content across multiple web servers. Okay, let's head back to the presentation. Next, we have the net command, which allows you to get specific information and perform several functions from the command line. This command has several parameters that you can use in conjunction to get the information that you want, again, or to perform a specific action. The first parameter is continue, which is used to restart a pause service. Then you have pause, which of course will pause a service. Print displays your print jobs and queues. Session will list or disconnect sessions between computers. Share will list the shares on your local computer and also can be used to share local resources. Start will list the running services and can also be used to start a service. Use or mount connects to a remote computer. Mount is the Linux command that's used to access NFS shared volumes. And finally, view will list the computers on the network. Okay, back at our Windows command prompt, let's just type in net space start. And this will list all the services that are running on the computer. Hit enter. And we had a pretty long list, which probably scrolled by. But as you can see here, we just have a list of the services that are running on the computer. And if you wanted to pause a service, you would just type in net pause. If you wanted to start one, you could do net start followed by the service name. OK, we'll head back to the presentation. We just have two more tools to review. If you happen to be running NetBIOS on your machine, you can use the nbstat command to display NetBIOS over TCP IP statistics. This includes the NetBIOS name tables and name cache. And this command can be used to recover or correct NetBIOS name cache entries. And our last tool is NetStat. 
which displays a list of computers' active incoming and outgoing TCPIP connections. This is available in both Windows and Linux, and your output will include local and remote computers' IP addresses, port numbers associated with each computer, and the state of the connection, whether it's established or closed. Let's go back to our command prompt and try this out. OK, back at the prompt, let's type in netstat, N-E-T-S-T-A-T, -T, and hit Enter. And what you can see again is the list of the incoming and outgoing connections. And you see the IP address, you see foreign address information, and you also see the state. You see established and closed wait for some of the states here. OK, that concludes our review of network monitoring tools. Let's go over what we've learned on the next slide back at the presentation. In this video, we learned about the concept of network monitoring and how it is used to track things like network performance and identify issues before they happen. Then we moved on to cover network troubleshooting tools like Ping, which tests connectivity, Tracer T and Tracer Route, which can tell you the path your data follows. Then we had IP config and IF config to list the details about your TCP IP configuration information, NS lookup to list host, the net command to look at various data and mount drives, route, which tells you your default gateway, and bstat, which displays net BIOS over TCP IP statistics, and finally netstat, which displays a list of your computer's active incoming and outgoing TCP IP connections. We at TrainSignal are always on the lookout for ways to improve our training. If you have any comments, things that you liked about the course, that you'd like to see continued in future courses, or suggestions to make viewing or understanding the material easier for you, we'd love to hear it. So don't let this be our last conversation. Feel free to call, email, or post a thread on our forums. You can even visit our website and leave feedback by clicking the floating red feedback button to the left of the page, or you can even comment on our blog at www.trainsignaltraining.com. It's up to you, but we'd really like to know what you think. Thanks for joining me, and I hope to see you in another video.